Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to the afternoon session. We are going to have the panel discussions today. And uh, before we start, I want to ask uh, that Pastor Kateti can be able to pray for us. Let us pray. Dear God in heaven, we want to invite you into this meeting. And as we start our program, gracious Lord, you may start with us. May you bless us with your Holy Spirit, and may you go with us to the end. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, viewers and um, uh, friends of New Life, members, and those who are also here in the sanctuary, we want to we want to welcome you in a very special way to look at this topic about how the pastors can be able to serve us effectively. And the context of this is that um, New Life, for example, is a city church. We have quite a number of many members. And um, these members sometimes, or most of the time, are quite busy. The population is dispersed. And um, many of the members are not as engaged if you compare that with the, with the countryside churches. Now, under these challenges also, many members don't attend the midweek prayers or meetings because of logistical reasons, traffic jams, the delays and workings that happen in the, in the cities. Now, this means, therefore, that the pastors who actually serve us, the expectations that members have and the expectations that pastors have, the gap is wide. If you look at, for example, it's possible that 50% of the members don't know each other. You know, you have 5,000 members, 6,000 members of New Life. Is it possible that they will all be knowing each other? The answer is no. Now, this is the big question then that we have today. Can the ministers be able to serve effectively these members? And um, we have able panelists before you members and also viewers who are going to look through this process whether how we can work effectively how we can organize ourselves to work effectively for god and i want to introduce them i want to begin from my right hand side i want to to introduce yourself and then uh, welcome the congregation to this uh, discussion over to you pastor thank you my name is pastor dixon kateeti pleasure Welcome, church. My name is Elsa Ogola. Welcome so much. Good afternoon. My name is Pastor Ben Obuoge. You're most welcome. Thank you. And uh, the one moderating is uh, Steve Mogere. I'll be moderating this, uh, these discussions. We have two pastors and we have uh, Elsa, wonderful, wonderful panelists. I want to start uh, from the two pastors, just to put this in context. And I want to request Pastor Kateti to go through the book of First Peter, First Peter 5, 1 to 4. And uh, later, Pastor, you could go through Acts 20, 27 to 29, so that we can put this in perspective. Thank you so much, um, viewer. We are reading the book of uh, First Peter, chapter 5, verses 1 to 4. And this is what the Bible says. The elders who are among you, I exhort you. I, hi, who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that uh, will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion but willingly, not for dishonest gain but uh, eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, mm -hmm. but uh, being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that uh, does not fade away. Amina, thank you so much. Pastor, maybe you ask then we can put this in context. Uh, thank you so much. Um, the book of Acts chapter number 20 and the verse number 27 says, um, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose of God. Keep watch over yourselves mm -hmm. and over all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers 
to shepherd the church of God that he obtained with the blood of his own son. I know that after I have gone, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Wonderful. Shepherding. Pastor Katete. I want to go into a little deeper on what Peter is talking about. That elders and pastors should shepherd the flock. Thank you so much. Um, I, I want to start by saying that just like the way our moderator has put it, that uh, this verse does not necessarily speak about the elders alone, but this verse also includes the pastors. We are shepherds, and being shepherds, what Peter is admonishing us is that, uh, is and first and foremost, is admonishing us as one that has been very close to Jesus. He, has, he had seen Jesus, he had observed all that he went through, and he had observed all the things that he was doing. And therefore, all that he's saying here, he's saying things that he's a witness to. And because he's a witness now, that's why he encourages us as church elders and as pastors that we have a responsibility to take good care of the flock that God has entrusted to us. And taking care of all shepherding has a deeper meaning. It has a lot that is entailed. And, and, and so I may not be able to say all of it, but uh, shepherding may mean even uh, taking care of God's children spiritually mm -hmm. by visiting with them, by sharing the word with them, and doing other many other things, even giving them help, whichever help they need, that are uh, some of the things that we may be able to do. But besides that, as we do God's work, there is no time God is willing to make it compulsory for any of us. God takes delight when he sees us doing his work with a willing heart. So willingness in this aspect is very crucial. That uh, as an elder, you are not in that position just for the sake, but uh, you are there simply because God purposes that uh, you may serve him willingly. That you shouldn't let anybody push you around, but that uh, because it's a noble and a very holy um, 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 responsibility, that you may take it up and do it with all your heart. So there's nothing like you're going to be forced around. And the other thing that we need also to um, uh, bring to our attention is that while we are doing such and we are offering such services, that we do not ask for any favor, that we are supposed to do such I mean, free of charge. You shouldn't wait for anything like a gain from anybody or from anyone. So, so, so that then as you discharge your duties responsibly, no church member will say, this one has this kind of a weakness or this kind of a problem. As I come to the end, I want to say that uh, while it is true, God purposes that uh, we may serve his children then he has a reward. And the reward that he has is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. It is for mm -hmm. those that have been committed and those that are devoted to his cause. And so if we commit ourselves and we, have, we faithfully do what God wants us to do, then finally when Christ comes again, because he's the chief shepherd, mm -hmm. then we shall all of us be able to receive a reward for all that we have done. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Closeness, deep understanding of the flock, and that there is the greater shepherd who is coming, yes. who is Christ. Yes. Let's hear from uh, Acts. Acts is, um, is a book that I usually used to say that I, I've been a deacon and I'm saying this is a book that everybody should be able to read to understand how to serve. Pastor, from the book of Acts, 20, 27 to 29. Uh, thank you so much, moderator. I, 
I want to appreciate, allow me to appreciate what mm. Pastor Kajet has just mentioned mm. on the theology of shepherding. Yeah. Um, think of that young man out there in the field having the sheep or, or the cattle. Because that is where basically this whole idea is taken from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and when you look at the Old Testament theology of shepherding, it will give you the essence and the usage of this word mm -hmm. in the New Testament. Yeah where the shepherd is willing to give their life just because of, uh, wow. of the sheep. Mm -hmm. And so as we talk of shepherding, and if you are a shepherd, whether you are an elder, and I'm glad that pastor is saying not only pastors, but even when you are in charge of any group, mm -hmm. you are a shepherd at that level. Yeah. If you are a mother, you are a father, you are shepherding your family. Yeah. How much are you willing to lay down mm -hmm. for the sake of the sheep? And, and if you are not able to count such, mm -hmm. then I think your shepherding is, uh, is wanting. <laughs> Let me go to my text. Yes, please. The book of Acts. Mm -hmm. Book of Acts, chapter number 20. These are the words of uh, our brother Paul to the elders in, in, in Ephesus. And, and I want to imagine in my, in my, in my, in my thinking that he's, he's, he's saying after the service, elders remain behind. <laughs> you know, when you hear elders remain behind, it's either communication, a reminder, or a rebuke. Mm -hmm. Now, for you to understand what is happening on that text, just pick on verse number 26. It says, therefore, I declare to you this day that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you. Wow. That wow. is powerful. And then he goes now down to justify mm -hmm. why he's saying, I am not responsible. Yeah. If any of you is going to perish... I am not responsible. Why? Mm -hmm. Because now 27 he says, 28 he 27 he says, mm -hmm. for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose of God. And so the first flock of brother Paul mm -hmm. are the elders. Yeah. If you have weak leadership, mm -hmm. the sheep down there will suffer. Yeah. That is one thing I'm just getting here. And he's telling them, look, I have told you the purpose of God. Do we understand the purpose of the owner of the sheep? The chief shepherd who is soon coming? Do we understand? Mm -hmm. Do we realize that we shall give an account of the number of sheep that was given to us? Yeah. And by the way, you'll be so surprised mm -hmm. that we are living in a generation moderator where mm -hmm. some of our elders and pastors, they can't even give you the exact number of, uh, of the membership. Wow. Mm. Wow. There's nothing like approximately. Uh -huh. It is either 520 or 560 mm -hmm. or 700. Wow. When you begin to hear things like, uh, we are approaching 1,000, <laughs> <laughs> there's a problem. <laughs> you must be sure. You know, if you're a serious farmer, you must know how the number of your chicken. Yes. How many left the herd and how many have come back in the evening. Yes. But most importantly, mm -hmm. something else I pick from that text is... A day is coming uh -huh. when we shall give an account yeah. of that which mm -hmm. was given. Of the year. And at the end of uh, the third year, mm -hmm. you realize you still have 10 but very fat cows. <laughs> Will you be a happy farmer? No. no. As a shepherd, you will be encouraged if the flock is increasing. But if the flock is not increasing, it is only getting fatter and fatter. Yeah. You can't smile if you're a serious farmer. You, you, Pastor, you, you, you try, you're bringing something <laughs> very, very important here. You're trying to imply that, um, and both of you, really. Yes. Absolutely. What about the flock? Knowing the oh, dish? absolutely, it must. So uh, this, 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 um, the whole theology around uh, being a shepherd, who was always ahead? The shepherd and the sheep are following or the, the flock is ahead and the sheep and the, 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 the shepherd is taking them around. Who, who was always ahead of them? The shepherd. The shepherd. Meaning, viewers, that the flock, the members must know their pastor. The members must know their elder. The members must know their deacon, their leaders. For if you don't, 
then the theology of, of as Paul put it, yes. he said, Pastor is saying, I'm not responsible. And I want you to know the whole counsel, and I don't want to hide it from you. Mm -hmm. You are shepherds. Take care of this. Mm -hmm. And then you know he says, almost to appear, Paul was trying to say that, do you know who purchased? Mm -hmm. Do you know who purchased the price? Christ himself, right? By his own blood. By his own blood. Absolutely. Now, I don't know, Pastor Kateti, uh, before I go to Elsa, yes. you've been with us here. Yes. You, you've been in your life. You have been with us. You probably know many of us, and we know you. Pastor here is in Karengata. It's another big church. Yes. I want to, before I get there, maybe I want to ask, I want you to hear how members feel. This is what you as the priests, the, the pastors and the elders representing the whole of that eldership. Now let's hear from Elsa. Do you have any expectations from the shepherd? Okay. Expectation, yes. First of all, uh, the shepherd is leading a flock, a group of a flock that is, uh, let me say they are sinners. The flock are the church members. They are sinners. So we expect, myself, I expect the pastor to go further and reach these members mm -hmm. away mm -hmm. from church. Mm -hmm. And uh, this needs visiting at our homes, visiting me in the hospital, visiting me when I really need that pastor. I need that pastor to be available for me. And uh, it has been a challenge. Even when pastors want to come to our homes, it has been a challenge. Not all uh, the flocks are ready to receive the pastors. But as per my thoughts and my opinion, pastors, we need them to go further, like visiting us in our places uh, of residence, our places of work. Sometimes my workplace, uh, there are challenges at my workplace. So I need a pastor to come and pray with me. So that's my expectation, that they need to go outside the church so that they can meet the needs of their, their church members. And that way, the church members are able to come to church uh, even though maybe they were backsliders and maybe they gave up to come to church, that way the members will come and the church, the flocks will increase in the church. Wow. Pastors, you are needed everywhere. Maybe you need to list down. When, when, from what time do you expect the pastors to, to come and see you? Maybe you can begin so that we can see, the pastors can understand the weight that they have. What are these exact needs that you as a member you expect the pastor to be there not just only when there is a problem i'm sure but you've even mentioned the place of work you know this is a challenge i have never invited my pastor to the place of work they don't know where i work elsa what are these what are these events you want the pastors to be there okay not only let me say not only for sickness mm -hmm. not only for death or funeral but also for occasions like graduations, mm -hmm. they are very important for us to welcome our pastors to our homes. Mm -hmm. um, the time that they can come, it's upon the member that who needs to be visited. Now, is the he or she is the one to arrange with the pastor the time to come. But morning hours are good times uh, during the week, okay, during the weekend, because weekday we normally go to work. Mm -hmm. So, during the week, we can agree in the evening. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends now with the schedule of the pastor. But in the evening is uh, conducive mm -hmm. for me personally as I speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the day is also conducive for me at my working place. Uh, for the occasions, we have various occasions. The wedding, I need the pastor to be in my wedding. I need him to walk with me before my wedding day. Uh, Yes, walk with me through spiritual, uh, uh, the spiritual upliftment through, through my marriage walk. So before I get to that marriage, mm -hmm. I need that uh, closer uh, spiritual walk with Christ. And only pastor, they are the only ones to take us through that. So members, I don't think we should only invite pastors for, for only problems. But there are also good times that we need to invite pastors for us to show God that we are really thankful to mm -hmm. him for what 
the wonderful things that he does to our lives. Wow. Yes. Pastor Oboge. Yes. This is what uh, the <laughs> member expects. Yes. Literally, you need to be there Mondays to Friday. Mm -hmm. And then on Sabbath, we expect you to be here. Mm -hmm. We expect you to be there from the time I'm born to the time that I'll move out of this. Our, uh, you know, Peter, Peter is talking a, a lot about telling the elders what to do to, as assistant pastors. Absolutely. I'm seeing Paul also struggling. You know, Ephesus was a trading center, a, a hub. Are there experiences from the Bible, the city churches, and how the pastors then, the apostles, dealt with this issue? You have many members. Look at the context. Look at the, the expectations. Before we get into how we can organize ourselves, how are the apostles functioning that time effectively? Uh, thank you so very much. I, I appreciate what um, uh, my panelist is, is raising on the, the desire and the, the, the expectation of a, of, mm. a, of a pastor. Mm. The truth of the matter, on principle, that is what is required. That I need to be there for my members. And, and I want to let members know that pastors are not trained to sit in office. I mean, that, that during my time, Pastor Kateti, I don't remember taking any course unit that taught me on how to sit in an office. Mm -hmm. We are not CEOs. Okay. The word pastor is, is actually not, it's not a noun, it's a verb. Uh -huh. Yes. You're not a pastor until you begin to pastor, and you can't pastor from office. Mm -hmm. So this happens out there. But again... <laughs> B before we, you come for counseling because you have lost your job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did the pastor even know what kind of a job you've been doing? I'm seeing where you're going to. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes members want to rush and we talk you have issues in your marriage in the bad times. Mm -hmm. But even when you were marrying, no one knew. Not even your pastor. In other words, before we get into problems, mm -hmm. yeah. Let us also have an experience with your pastor during good times. Now, my pastor can agree with me. Samuel, Prophet Samuel, sure. a shepherd, yeah. one day he finds his way to some village. Mm -hmm. and, and he had, um, you know, a mission to go and visit the family of Jesse. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he's met with elders and they're asking him, man of God, have you come in peace? Mm -hmm. Because the theology was, if you see a man of God coming, there is fire. Wow. And even me, when I grew up, you can agree with me, that is what it used to be. Yeah. If pastor is coming, either that family fought last night, okay. <laughs> or, or there's a problem, someone is sick, mm -hmm. but that is, should not be the case. Yeah. Yeah. That should not be the, the case. And so, but the bottom line here, and let me share this experience with you. A town church, the experience is not beginning now. Mm -hmm. And so as members of a uh, new life, mm -hmm. As members of Karengata, where I pastor, we have no excuse. Yeah. Churches have existed in cities. Sure. And people have been pastored. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the reason as to why we're having this meeting here today. That's right. And allow me to say this. You must have a relationship with your pastor. It is becoming hard for members to reach out to their pastor. One, because of the relationship. Based on, one, what you have heard about him. Mm -hmm. Some of us, we are living on the stories you have heard about our pastor. Right. Maybe where you used to be, you heard he was not visiting members. Mm -hmm. And you live with that history. That's people right. grow, people change. Take advantage of that. Now, what happens at my church? Mm -hmm. And this, I'll say it openly. With Karengata, I have no peace. Okay. I don't give my members appointment. Okay. They stop me and tell me, Pastor, on Wednesday at 6 come. Now, sometimes you say that, I'll say, okay, I'll check on my diary. Mm -hmm. They will tell me, pastor, check on your diary. You have it in your bag. Open it and write now. Mm -hmm. Write it down. Mm -hmm. That is how serious members do their thing. Yeah. So stop Pastor Kali. Stop Pastor Nyanet, Nya, Nya, Ezra. Nyanot Ezra, who was introduced today. Yes. Let them have, get to know when they can visit you. Yeah. I know in town setting, we are busy. Who told you pastor cannot come at your place of work? Unless you have no relation also at your place of work. <laughs> for some of us, we are also tyrants. It's true. People don't know that you are an Adventist at your place of work. Sure, sure. What is wrong me coming to where you sell your hamburger? Yeah. 
What is wrong? Come and say, oh, look, he is my pastor. Yeah. Call two, three, four ladies. Let's pray together. Five minutes. It means a lot. It's only in this church where you can see people even praying for their children when they're having exams. But they will never come back for prayers when they're reporting to school. <laughs> it's relational. We can't meet children here for prayers. Mm -hmm. And we don't know where these children come from. Mm -hmm. One of the young persons told me recently, that pastor, I look forward for a time when my parents will invite you home. I wish I had an opportunity of inviting you. But you see, I have no authority. And so I want to conclude by saying, mm -hmm. by being in a city setting, mm -hmm. it is not an excuse that we cannot be pastored. The Bible is explicit. In the church in Ephesus, a church that was in the city, yeah. it was well organized. Yeah. And the elders, the pastors, were able to reach out to their members. Wonderful. You know, members, I, I think we also need to also learn that elders are the assistant pastors. Get used to inviting them. If you don't have an elder, the next person, you remember the, the, in the, the classical case of our deaconry, yes. the deaconate was established, getting them to praying together. But you brought in something very interesting. We can actually visit. We can have with the pastor. We can meet in Java. We can meet in a hotel. We can meet on the roadside and actually pray. Let me, let me tell you something. One, one of my members is a very busy man. Yeah. And I really struggled, my pastor, on how to... Because he was telling me, pastor, coming home, I reach home at midnight. Wow. But I need to have a moment with you. Mm -hmm. So this day, I said, look, so where are you headed to on Monday? He told me Monday, I'm going to Kisumu. Mm -hmm. And it will be via road. I said, I will have a visitation with you in the car. Wonderful. I traveled with him from Nairobi all the way to Kericho. And my visitation was over. And I came out of back. the car, took the next bus, came back to Nairobi. And the visitation was done. We need not to have an excuse. There is no one who is too busy to be visited by Amen. a pastor or by an elder. Amen. Let me go to my pastor, Pastor Kateti. Your experience with the new life. 5,000 members. The ex expectation is high there. Yes, you have the Bible. You have understood the challenges as it were in those days. What was your experience? How, do we, how did you, for example, go about these members dealing with them with such kind of um, social economic setting? Okay, thank you so much, our moderator. Mm -hmm. One thing we need to know is that the pastors are human, mm -hmm. <laughs> just like the church members. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we thank God that uh, they have been given a solemn responsibility yeah. that is purely holy and uh, that uh, we should take it with all our heart and with all our willingness. Mm -hmm. Allow me to say that uh, when it comes to visitation, it's not just about the pastor visiting. Mm. I should bring it very clear to all of us mm. that uh, visitation is teamwork. Yeah. And the teamwork entails the pastor, mm. the church elders, mm -hmm and the deaconate department. Yeah. And so the pastor has the responsibility to bring the three together mm -hmm. so, so, so that then they harmonize their way of doing visitation. Mm -hmm. Because pastor being one, he yeah. may not be able to visit each and every church member. Very true. And there are times when, like a church like New Life, where we have more than 5,000 members, mm -hmm. there are times when many visitations come on your desk. Yeah. And there is no way you can uh, be able to visit all of them at the same time. Mm. It is either you will uh, try to uh, plan your itinerary well so that then you can accommodate all of them. But before then, then you have to invite your uh, church elders mm -hmm. and you agree together with the Deaconet team. Mm -hmm. You agree on how you can uh, be able to carry out your visitation. That is one of the experiences that I had. Okay. Let me also agree with my colleague pastor. Mm -hmm. He's mentioned something very important that I don't have to um, wait for my church members that I may um, tell them that, uh, you know, you hadn't told me about this. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just a matter of you share with me and I slot you. I mean, time is mine. I know how to organize myself. <laughs> 
Yeah. And because that time is within my reach, yeah. I can always be able to organize myself. And I'll tell you, here I have this kind of an appointment. Here I have this kind of an appointment. Can we slot it here? Yeah. Because I think by then, then I will have time. And I think most of the church members who had um, interaction with me, that is exactly what they have learned about me. Okay. I like what my colleague pastor has also said that uh, you, you, you don't have to or I don't have to tell you that uh, this is the time from this time to this time. Otherwise, in city churches, the truth is that uh, the best time for visitation, and this is my experience, okay. is in the evening. Okay, and, uh -huh. and it's very interesting that uh, we will leave the office or we will leave church or wherever we shall be, like by around six yes. or even by around five. And mm -hmm. that's the time when traffic jam, I tell you. And by the time you get to that home, it is like around ten. Wow. And you'll be with those people either for an hour or two, and you'll be leaving like around midnight. There are times we could even leave at midnight. And, and I know some of the church members may really not know this, yeah. but it is very true those that we've visited, we could even be able to uh, leave them by around that time. But one thing we also ensured we could do right is that we could also make sure if it is elders or if it is uh, the deacons or the deaconesses, we would make sure we drop them at their door. Okay. So that we ensure mm. that uh, all of them have reached secure and uh, safe. Wonderful. And you'll be the last person to get back to your, to your place. The other experience that I had, and especially with this church, is that uh, you need also to understand church members. Yes, It's true there are church members who will um, relate with you from yeah. time to time. Mm -hmm. And let me confess that uh, there could be some church members who had no opportunity to relate with me. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the reason being, every other time, either they want to come around, either I have another uh, team that mm -hmm. is visiting with me, or I'm visiting with them, yeah. or it could be they'll see you as a busy person. And so yeah. they assume. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's exactly what is happening with most of the church members. Uh, they assume that the pastor is overwhelmed, he has this kind of an enormous work, and therefore there is no need for me to bother the pastor. <laughs> Let me tell my church member, whether you are in here or whether you are out there, it is your responsibility to come over to your pastor and tell him whatever that you want to tell them. Ask them to visit with you. I should say, and allow me to say this, it is your right. That's why that pastor is here. You know, because visitation is not just, I mean, shepherding the flock is mm. not about the pulpit work. Yeah. The pulpit services. That is one way, but there is also another way. And I think that's why our sister White mm -hmm. makes it mm -hmm. very clear mm -hmm. that it is one way you make a rapport with your church members from the pulpit. Mm -hmm. And it is another, you follow with them wherever they go mm -hmm. so that you then remind them whatever you said at the pulpit. Sure. And that will always make the difference. And, and, and so I think um, those are a few of the experiences that I had. Wonderful. Otherwise, uh, visitation is possible mm -hmm. if only the pastor is willing, number mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. he organizes his own time mm -hmm. and um, he's, he's how to make sure that he's available. Mm -hmm. Because if I give myself other responsibilities, definitely I will not be available for, for my church members, and which, of course, I am supposed to. Because I yes. believe in the Adventist church, we are only having one business. And the business yeah. is serving church members. The only other business we have is taking good care of our families. Mm -hmm. and I think that's another obligation that we may not be able to do away with. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, there's something, Pastor, you've talked about. Even to maintain, you know, you've, you've come here, you've given from the pulpit, you made a calling. Uh, Steve has converted. Then there is the whole process of retaining that is the nature, retaining. And um, Pastor seems to suggest that we must have a connection. Above all, we must have teamwork. And we must realize how the church works. We have the pastor, we have the elder, we have the deacons and deaconesses, and we have all to work to organize the visitation. Now, visitation is so, so, so close to my heart. Let me, let me confess that. And then say... I am expecting, Elsa said that we are expecting the pastor and the elders to visit us, to come to my house, all 5,000 members. Pastor says it's not going to be very possible. But you've also said that we need to have a relationship. Let's have the number 
for our pastor. Let's know where the pastor is also. Now, this is as much as the pastor going to the members. What about the obligations from the members? Uh, do members find it easy? Maybe Elsa, um, as a member, could it be easier? Like we have just been introduced a new pastor today. How many members do you think by next week will be wanting to get the number for the new pastor? Is it possible that we could be just waiting? You know, pastor, our president said that um, we don't want to be idlers. We want to be engaged. We want to be involved, get involved. Do you think there are members who were just waiting for the pastor to discover them, for example? Actually, no, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Because a member can not just wait mm -hmm. there for the pastor to recognize him or her because the members are many. Mm -hmm. uh, our pastors are like three in mm -hmm. this church. So it's upon our members to, um, it's upon the member to look for the pastor. It's upon the member. Uh, we need to be, to be even in these prayer cell groups where we are able even to invite our pastors so that pastor is able to know each and every member. Because without inviting the pastor to our places of uh, residential, even the new pastor, he may not know uh, the member well. Maybe he might, like, there's a time I could, uh, uh, pastor, one of our pastors, let me say pastor, hello. He could ask me all the time, who are you? I keep on reminding him my name. Oh, okay, okay, now I know you. you. Where are your kids? This and this. Okay, okay, okay. Next time he will also come again. Who are you? <laughs> so I realized, uh uh. Then for us to be known by our pastors and even the new pastors, we need to engage them to our yeah. prayer cells. We need to uh, invite them. Even if we have online prayer cell meetings, we need to invite our pastors so that they may know each and every member. So that next time when you come to church, when he sees you, he will be able to recognize, oh, I came to your place. I, 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 sh I shared something in your prayer cell. I saw you introducing yourself. Now I know you. Now I'm able to attend to your needs because I know you. I think that's my thought about uh, how we can relate to the new pastors. Thank you. Pastor, I, many of us are like uh, Thomas, you know. I, ha I have to see you, you have known me, you know my place, then I feel I belong. But now Elsa is bringing another dimension, that is uh, prayer cells. If we have to, if we organize ourselves into cells where we pray together, I would like to hear your thoughts, uh, how Karengata has worked, uh, what would be your advice uh, to the members, the viewers and all of us. Over to you, Pastor. Uh, thank you so very much. Mm -hmm. I want to um, appreciate that uh, if there's one thing that this church is blessed with is how this church is organized. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it is one thing to organize this church in books. It is something else to tap into those blessings in terms of organization. Yeah. There are people out there when they look at our, look even how we survived during COVID. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for this organization, there are, there are churches that are struggling to come up again. Sure. But you know, when the big churches were closed, we went back to the home church. Mm -hmm. And we survived somehow before we, we came back. Mm -hmm. But allow me to, to say these words that are spoken by a gentleman by the name of Gilbert Belzakian. Mm -hmm. He says that the silent shaking at the core of every human being is the need to know and to be known, to understand and to be understood, to possess and to be possessed, to belong unconditionally without fear of laws, betrayal or rejection. It is the search for the freedom to be who we really are. Mm -hmm. Every member, without telling you, one of the things that we all need is to be understood and to understand. The question I ask myself is this, where is that space in the church of God? Where I can be understood, where, where I, can, I can say things without necessarily being mis misunderstood. Mm -hmm. We have to find that place. And the pen of inspiration, as my pastor did mention, Ellen White was shown where that space is. Mm -hmm. And that space is in the prayer cell. Blessed is a church. Mm -hmm. 
Blessed are members who belong in prayer cells. Amen. Exposed are you if you don't belong in any prayer cell. Hii mambo ya kujitegemea. Hii mambo ya independence. It doesn't work like that. God knows so well that my children are exposed if they are begin to run on this journey alone. And so we are encouraged to, to find that space and, and belong. A prayer cell. A prayer cell. It is the only way. Now, how have we managed at Karengata? Mm -hmm. We are equally a fairly big church. And we have our own share of our challenges. Now, one of the things we have discovered, it is very easy to recruit members to prayer cells. Mm -hmm. It's easy to simply say, those who come from this direction of this city, meet behind there and begin your prayer cell. It is very easy. <laughs> and that is using the geographical location. Sure. But later on, we discovered it doesn't work. Mm. Because prayer cell goes beyond people just meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You must have some things in common. Yeah. You have to have a common denominator. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that you also realize that we are prayer cells, and I would say this without any fear of contradiction, that has a specific clique of people within the congregation. Mm -hmm. mm. The prayer cells for doctors. Mm -hmm. a prayer the for prayer cell for, for farmers. For farmers. I should begin with farmers. Yes. <laughs> for lawyers, you know. For lawyers. It can't work like that. Yeah. It must go beyond. Sure. So we, we must first establish what is the purpose of us having a prayer cell. Mm -hmm. And once that is articulated, then you now say, look, the common denominator for, for prayer cell A is this. Yeah. Form it. Mm -hmm. We have people who cross the road, who cross Nairobi, who cross the church, and they cross over three, four prayer cells, and they come to Rongai. <laughs> and when you follow their history, they have been members of that group for over 10 years. And surprisingly, where members have a common denominator, the prayer cell multiplies itself. Now, you also realize that most churches are born out of a prayer cell. Sure. Karengat is one of them. Mm -hmm. We are children from this church. Mm -hmm. A few members began a prayer cell. Mm -hmm. And after some time today, we have a bigger church. Yeah. So the question we're asking ourselves, what is the purpose of a prayer cell? Allow me to mention three things that really come out so strong. Yeah. One, the prayer cell is for enrich, yeah. but it doesn't stop there. Number two, it is for outreach. A prayer cell that does not have new faces. If you meet for two weeks or two meetings and there's no new person coming, you are dead. Wow, wow. You should begin writing your eulogy. You are finished. Mm -hmm. A prayer cell is that which will begin to have new faces. The only place where our brethren from other denominations can easily come is at the prayer cell, not in this church. Mm. I, my neighbor, who is a Catholic, can easily come and worship with me in my house than inviting them to come to church. So the more new faces you have, then you know aspect number two in terms of prayer cell, you're doing good. Yeah. So it is enrich, mm -hmm. outreach. Mm -hmm. Now, the two will be a springboard for you mm -hmm. for upreach. Yeah. Let me say that prof again. <laughs> okay. It is enrich, enrich, outreach, uh -huh. and, and upreach. So is it possible? Let me let me yes, just yes, answer yes. them. So it's actually you bring another dimension. I could have a prayer cell where I work. You know, we just meet for lunch, pray, and we don't have to all to be in the same denomination. That's actually your saying. Oh, absolutely. So that is enrich and uh, uh, outreach. outreach, and then after that, we'll have the outreach. Outreach. That is the purpose. Wow. The question we, and that's a struggle we have at Karengat, and I pray mm -hmm. that as you even reorganize your prayer cells, you don't fall into that trap. Mm -hmm. Is having a prayer cell with 200 members, ah, is that a prayer cell? Because that's... one of the th things we appreciate at the prayer cell is we get to know each other, not just by name, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. intimately. Mm -hmm. Now you have a prayer cell here that has 150 members. You're actually transferring problems of this church to the village. <laughs> I see. Um, one, one, one of um, my passionate writers, he says that once a prayer cell, 
hits more than 12 people, mm -hmm. you are getting on a very dangerous ground. Wow. 12. 1, 2, 3, 10, 12. Divide it. And including the, our children? Oh, up, no. Well, of course, adults. Okay. I don't know what your def definition of a child. Okay. How, old is, how, how old is your child? But mm -hmm. once you begin to hit that number, 20, you have no opportunity of even utilizing the talents. Yeah. Let me say this as I hand it over to you. Sure. I was never born. My past, I hope you have this story, is my, my ministerial director. I was never born an Adventist. I was born in the Roman Catholic Church, mm -hmm. like most of you here. When I came to the Adventist Church, my first meeting was in a prayer cell. Okay. Amen. Amen. Very curious, because they were singing too loud, but very organized voices. So I came. <laughs> I sat there, and I, and I listened. And, and you know, and, and, you know, I was a very ardent uh, uh, Catholic, and I never wanted my brothers and sisters to know that I had attended that first meeting. Mm -hmm. But that was the closest I got. Yeah. The long story short, my first sermon, Pastor, my first sermon was in a prayer cell, mm -hmm. and some lady told me, "You have preached like a pastor, and here I am now, 15 years in the ministry, Amen. because someone noted." my talent in the prayer cell. There are members in this congregation mm -hmm. who have never had a chance of holding this mic here. Mm -hmm. Holding a mic and saying, Happy Sabbath. They have never come. The only opportunity you have to use your talents, your gifts, to even test if you can be a leader is in the prayer cell. You miss that. There's no safe space for you. Please say it again, you know. Even to organize the seats, you are not a deacon. How? But within a prayer cell, you organize. You become a deacon, right? Uh -huh. Within the prayer cell, you, pray, you preach. So we don't have all to. The pulpit will only accommodate how many sermons in a year? 52. 52. How many elders, Pastor, do you have? Let me start with Karengat. How many elders? Uh, on average, now, in total, we have about 70, but serving are 15. Wonderful. 15? Yes, 15. Pastor, how many do you have in your life? 60. 60. Can they all preach? Not but within possible. the prayer cell, yes. can they all be able to preach? Absolutely. Not at all. What about the deacons? We had 180 during my time. Yeah. Can they be able to serve in the prayer cell? Okay? Now, you have brought in an extremely very important point about prayer cell, then the organization of that. Yes. And uh, we are going to hear the, the experience again. Um, how prayer cell? How many prayer cell do we have Elsa in New Life, for example? About 30? Okay, not really sure. Uh -huh. Maybe that's the figure. That's the figure? I may, uh, yeah, I, I, can, I may forget. Yes. Yeah, that's the figure. But the, the experience with the prayer cell, mm -hmm. okay, I've been in a prayer cell and uh, it started very well mm -hmm. and then uh, what i came to realize with prayer cell for you to get before even the corona uh, period that time even for you to get a member to get members to visit each other is not it was not easy mm -hmm. uh, getting members to come to your house or even getting members to go to somebody else's house is not easy. You'll find like few of them, like uh, I come from Buruburu Prayer Cell, a very wonderful prayer cell uh, team. Mm -hmm. But now sometimes you find it difficult to engage members to come and pray together in somebody's house. And uh, that was the big challenge that we had. For pastors, it was easy because when pastors come, we could walk with them to every member's house and uh, we were very blessed through pastors uh, preaching and uh, sharing with us. So I can say the experience, it, is a, it has a good experience. At the same time, the experience is also challenging because for you to get members to leave their homes, eh, to come even on a Sunday, like us, most of the time we used to meet on a Sunday, mm -hmm. members cannot come easily. So that was the challenge I can say the experience, the challenge experience that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess that's, the also, that's also the challenge, challenge that other prayer cells have. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much, Elsa. Uh, Pastor Kateti, um, maybe I want to look at the expectation of the prayer cell. Uh, you've been with us in New Life. You are now um, 
in a situation where you can actually see with the bird's eye on the other churches. Uh, what are some of the characteristics of um, an effective presser, for example? What is expected for each presser so that then we can sustain this unit? Thank you so much, our moderator. Number one, it should be a um, prayer seal that is manageable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number. Prayer seal that uh, you can be able to reach out to each and every member. Mm -hmm. A prayer seal where each member is involved. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's something that uh, can be dangerous. Like when you have prayer seal members who are dormant, you can bear witness with me that the next moment it will be dead completely. Mm. Mm. And so they, they should make sure that uh, each member is involved. The other thing is that, uh, um, and the other quality is that uh, prayer cell need to be, uh, especially for the pastors, mm. it's always good to visit with them time and again mm. Mm. So, so that pastors can also uh, ensure that mm. those prayer cells are really working. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastors can also be assisted by the, by, by the church elders mm -hmm. because church elders are like assistants. They can also be able to visit and see if those prayer cells are really working. Because one mm -hmm. thing I noticed is that uh, every other time prayer cell members hear the pastor is coming, <laughs> I mean, the house shall be full. Yeah. And you'll even see visitors who have also joined the team. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it is always good that... Uh, the pastor and his team, they can always do uh, visitation. They can arrange it in such a way that uh, it doesn't take a longer time, but that it can be something that is frequent. Mm -hmm. It may not be on a weekly basis, mm -hmm. but I can suggest that it can be uh, like once in a month or even twice in two months. Mm -hmm. it, can, it may not go beyond three months. If it does, then I think something might uh, not go well with, with such a prayer cell. The other thing is that uh, we, we need to have the prayer cell leaders, the yeah. coordinators. We need mm. to have uh, something like um, some, some sort of training. Yeah. And, and, and we can always have some, uh, some meeting, you know, and we get reports from them yeah. and get to hear if exactly these, these uh, I mean, they are doing anything. Mm. Because it is out of those reports that you get to know whether if this prayer cell is weak or whether if it is a strong prayer cell. And then the other thing is that uh, it's also good to improvise a way on how they can visit with dormant uh, yeah. prayer yeah. cell members. Mm -hmm. When they don't um, visit or when, whenever they don't come for fellowship, I think it is the responsibility of uh, the leader to ensure that they reach out to them. It could be they were held up somewhere. Mm. Some could be in the jam. Mm. Some could be at the workplace. Some mm. could be either there's a sick one or they have gone to visit. Because such a big church like this, you know, you, you may realize that if one is sick, many might be affected. Yeah. And, and eventually you may discover that uh, why people are not attending the prayer cell. The reason is because either they have a loss at home mm -hmm. or they have somebody that is very sick. And so that's why they have uh, been able to go and visit with their, with their sick. The other thing that I believe uh, should be also uh, captured in our prayer cell mm -hmm. uh, growth mm -hmm. is that uh, we should always, uh, I mean, do... Um, how do I call it? But they can, they can also, they can look around and see a church like now Karengata yeah. and, and back, I mean, do what we call benchmarking. Bench benchmarking. Do be benchmarking mm. so that they can yeah. see what is it that they are doing on the other side. Why are these prayer cells flourishing and yeah. ours are like dying? Mm. So, so that once they do the benchmarking, they're in a position to see on how they can now begin to revive their yeah. prayer cells. Yeah. And the other thing that I feel is also important, and uh, this should be characteristic of um, all the prayer cell leaders. Mm. You can always organize um, a meeting. It may not necessarily be a physical meeting, mm -hmm. but even if it has to be, then you can uh, plan it in such a strategic way that uh, you may always meet every Sabbath. You can mm. secure like 20, 30 of your minutes, you pray together. Mm. 
as, yes. a, as prayer cell leaders. You seek God's guidance. You intercede for those that you are leading. Remember, in your prayer cell, you have prayer cell members that are active, others are not active, and you need to intercede for them. There are others who might be affected now that we are in town and we are in the city. It could be they have lost their job. It could be they are also having other challenges, family issues and so forth. Mm -hmm. So as a result of that, you need to meet time and again and have prayers together. The other thing is that uh, you need also to organize it in such a way that uh, you make sure that uh, each and every prayer cell member is available. Do not organize for a prayer cell meeting where some members and most of them may not be found. It is always good plan for a prayer cell meeting where almost, I know we are in a city, and not all of them may be available at the same time. Mm. But one thing I believe is that uh, it could be there is a common denominator that can pull many together. <coughs> and so you need to look out and get to know which is the best time, the best day, when such a prayer cell can be able to, to all together. I, and I must also make it very uh, clear to all of us that not all prayer cells are the same. Yeah. So you cannot yeah. apply all these things to the all prayer cells. Mm. Remember, a prayer cell that is within the city may not be like a prayer cell that is in Ongata Rungai. Sure. And, 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 and that's why you should check around your environment, mm -hmm. get to know those that uh, you are having around with you in your prayer cell, they are working up to what time, like what my colleague has already mentioned, that mm. somebody's working and they get home like around midnight. Mm. You know, how do you help such a person? Because it's also very important. You, you know, prayer cell is about shepherding the flock that you have. And you must, I mean, take care of each and every one of them. And if there is any way you can also organize for, for the few that you, they cannot be able to join the rest, then you can also see on how you can accommodate them. Because if it is beyond them, you as a leader, it's always good to see on how you can organize something for them so that they can also have fellowship. And by doing so, who knows, as you come together, God is so much faithful that he will make each of you available at the same time, same, I mean, same day, and, and you, you find your prayer cell uh, working so easy. I think those are a few of the things that I would, I would be able to say. I think I've said weekly meeting. That is very important. Mm. If it is weekly meeting, let it be that you'll do it as a, I mean, on a weekly basis. Mm. If it is on a monthly basis or in a, in a fortnight, then you, you, you just go for that because each prayer cell has its also own needs that uh, prayer cell A might be having specific needs that are not in prayer cell B. Mm -hmm. And so these are things that we need to learn so that once we also establish the, I mean, the, the prayer cell needs, that we can be able to attend to them. The other thing that I want also to share with us and with the members around here and the members that are out there is that God has given us technology, technology yeah. that we need to utilize. I, I know that at times when technology has come, many of us would want to shy away. But I just want to encourage us that uh, God has intentionally and has purpose that he gives us technology for our own use. Yep. Yes, the vendors may not be Christians. They may not be believers. But believe you me, God, I, or, or the Spirit of God is using them to, I mean, to uh, bring such things to us so that then we can be able to utilize them well. It could be that the people out there in the world, they are misusing some of uh, the technology that we have with us around. I mean, we, uh, we have ar uh, with us around. But I should also make it very clear to all of us that uh, those technology has been made for us and for our own use for our only purpose. Once we, we utilize it and we organize for things like WhatsApp meetings mm. where we can be able to pray together, if we cannot be able to meet together, there is nothing wrong if we can spare even 10, 20 minutes, we pray together on our social media. There is nothing wrong with that. And, and, and that should also be characteristics of sure, most, of, sure. most of the prayer cells. Mm -hmm. If you can't meet physically, God has given us the technology. Let's utilize it. 
and, and, and so that then we are a blessing to each other. And we shouldn't wait and, at such a time when we can be able to meet on social media for like a whole hour. I know some people might also be struggling. And that's why as press your leaders, you need also to be human enough. You need to understand your prayer cell members. There are those who cannot even afford that uh, um, banto. And, and so you need also to see on how you can assist them so that they can be able to join. And if they can afford 40 minutes, then you don't have to go beyond 40 minutes just for the sake of them because we want to care about each and every one of us. We are shepherding. We are caring about the sheep, the mm -hmm. flock that we have with us. So we must be considerate. Yeah. Let's not become ignorant and neglect our responsibility because we are also mixed up. And Good. like the way I know New Life Church, we have all, uh, I mean, all levels of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. all classes of people are at New Life. People that are blessed more than others. Yeah. And, and people that are also needy. People that are, are, are in one. And, and so because there are people that are needy, we need to accommodate in them in such a way. One, one thing that I should also make very clear to all of us is that the church members, and I want to appeal to you as a church member. I, I know there are church members who don't want to be visited either because of <laughs> the kind of home they have around with them. Mm -hmm. Allow me to say that um, people are not coming to see what, where you sleep, what you eat, and the kind of utensils you have around with you. Mm. I, I thank God that I had the privilege to visit some members, members that are of new life, and, and guess what? I had the opportunity even to sit on their bed. Yeah. Because when Amen. you get into the house, the house, the, you, there's no way you can get a chair that you can be able to sit. And, and I, I thank God that uh, I could visit with others and we could utilize the same the same bed as our seat. And mm. we were very much comfortable. Yeah. And, and I think you can also encourage your pastors that they can visit and sit with you wherever. As long as it's a place where we can be able to sit together, fellowship together, and even listen to God's word as we pray together. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Before pastor comes in, two things that pastor you've mentioned. For members, we want to belong. All members, viewers, belong Take new life. Not just only this church compound, but the neighbors around you, the prayer cell, as Pastor said. That is number one. The second point that Pastor you've mentioned is accountability, reporting back. Us who are the leaders reporting back to the church the work we are doing, how the flocks are doing, you know, how are the members? What is the what is what is what is the issue the issues, the issues they're dealing with, the welfare issues, for example the spiritual issues that they are struggling with, and even the social and even political issues that they are dealing with, economic issues they are dealing with. Thank you so much, Pastor. I wanted uh, Pastor to weigh in as we come to the conclusion. A very, a very quick one on what yes. my Pastor has said. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm glad that Pastor you're bringing in the subject of, uh, or the question of, uh, of technology. Mm -hmm. I, I know you're in charge of communication and you, uh, you are very passionate about, about it. But I do not want to really deviate from that. But I also know that technology has also made some people to be too lazy from doing that which they need to do. Mm -hmm. let, let me speak of my experience. <laughs> where, where you are running a meeting, an online meeting, people log in because they don't want to offend you. <laughs> <laughs> and they disappear. Oh, really? If you begin to call names at random, you miss people. But pastor, you know technology was invented so that we, become, we don't have to spend a lot of energy. To do it. That's the whole idea of technology. Absolutely. But what I'm saying is technology can do us good. But there's one aspect I feel, unless I should be guided, maybe in another forum. Mm -hmm. There are things technology cannot do. Sure. I mean, think, for instance, you are bereaved. Those of you here have lost your beloved ones. And people send you messages. As, as much as they will be very powerful texts, they will not make a lot of sense. Like when they come in person, yes. the fellowship aspect of home churches, there is that warmth. Pastor, if you come to my bed sit and you sit on my bed, trust me, your prayer will change. You will even pray that God will take me to another level. Thank you so much. That I, is very key. 
I know that we cannot finish this. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming to the last, uh, the last uh, story where each one of us will have a chance. But before we do that, maybe Elsa, you can say something, and then I can have pastors to say as we close. Okay, just a short one. Uh, I thank Pastor Kateti and my pastor here yeah, for what they have just given about the prayer cell. And there's something that Pastor just said. There's always a miracle when you allow uh, members of the church leaders to come and visit you at your residential area. Mm -hmm. Miracles happen and God has always been faithful. Like uh, the way Pastor said, there are members he visited at their homes and he sat on their bed sitters and today those members are in higher residential areas. They're not even in that bed sitter. They're not in that uh, uh, slum, uh, the way that we call it. So it's really a pleasure. It's always, we all members should be very happy to invite church leaders or even church members to visit with them at their places because you, who knows maybe through that way god is opening will open a way for you god will open a way for your business god will give you a bigger house than what you are living in so we should not shy away from accepting the men of god uh, the children of god to visit with us because it will bring a big Amen. impact to our families and to our Christian work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's have closing remarks. Pastor. Okay, thank you. Mine is just but to encourage church members kindly attend your prayer cell. Um, allow your pastor, your church elder, your deacons and deaconesses to visit with you and to pray with you and to encourage you. Kindly please do not wait until when you have an issue, when you have a problem, just call your pastor, call your elder, whenever the, I mean, whenever, I mean, and wherever. Because this is the, the, their responsibility. And it's always good that we pray together in good times, not, not to pray while we are going through bad times. The other thing that I want to encourage you to do is that prayer cell, uh, kindly, the prayer cell leaders, many are the times we have some of our prayer cell members suffering and sometimes they have no one to turn to mm -hmm. would want to encourage church members because before you get to your pastor because town churches city churches are very big so much that uh, if every need is brought to the attention of the pastor then they can be overwhelmed and i think for the burden to be lessened somehow it is always good for prayer cell members visit with your prayer cell leader just have a relationship with them share with them whatever that you are going through it could be you are afraid either simply because you have i mean you are afraid that people will get to know exactly what you are going through but i think it's also equally not good for you to keep quiet because you die with your problem and nobody will get to know or you start complaining that this and so, they have not assisted me, they have not helped me in any way, and yet you've not opened up your, your mind, you've not shared anything. So it's always good, op open up your heart, share with the, whoever is your leader, mm -hmm. and, and then they can see on how they can help you. If it asks them to come to the church, then let it come to the church, simply because then they have tried all the avenues and it hasn't worked well. The other thing that I want to encourage you, press your members kindly, invite friends okay strangers mm -hmm. people who are not Adventists. Mm -hmm. you know you may make it a routine we are always meeting as friends that share the same faith it, it, it ought not to be so kindly endeavor to invite other people friends who do not know about the Adventist faith and i believe by doing so as my colleague has put it it's about inreach, it's about outreach, and then outreach, which is so important. Members, visitation is also very important. I want to encourage my pastors as a, as a ministerial secretary of Southern Aerobic Yadu Field, I want to encourage my pastors. You always have a personal touch with your church members if you can find time to visit with them and have that relationship with them. Yes, the pulpit is important, and while the pulpit is as important as it is, but again, you need to move out of your pulpit, 
go and visit with your church members. At times, yes, you may wait for them to call you, and at times you may not necessarily wait for them to call you. Just organize for visitation and visit with your church members, start with the church elders, and move on with the rest of the other members of the church. And finally, the members will just be, yes, you are summons. Let me say this as I appreciate my professor. I allow me just to mention him, as we Dr. Finish, Njagi, yes. Yes. who uh, I'm finishing, huh? yes. who, who, who made it very clear while we were taking our ministerial practicum. And I remember he could make it very clear to us that uh, pastors, your sermons may not be uh, the kind of sermons you will touch us so. But in as much as you can move out of the pulpit mm -hmm. and uh, visit with a church member, you will always touch their heart. You always touch their soul. And so I, for me, I believe this is very uh, essentially important that uh, while it is true, I can be a good speaker, but again, while I can make that uh, um, kind of a speech that uh, moves every church member, but down the line, as long as I cannot visit with the church members, you know, it will be like, Yes, our business is at the pulpit. Once you are done, you go your way. I will also go my way. And so it is beyond that. That's why I'm saying I encourage my pastors, wherever they are, because I'm not talking about the pastors of New Life. I'm talking yeah. about pastors in Southern Nairobi, Kajado Field. Can we go out and visit with our church members? And, and I believe Thank you, you see the, the, the change. Thank, Thank you. And before you. pastor comes, I... As a moderator, I will be failing if I don't allow at least just one member, I think, wants to raise an issue because of time. Uh, please, if you don't mind, um, um, let me give you the mic, if you don't mind. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, moderators. God bless you abundantly. I have three, but very, very fast. Um, she talked about vi being visited in the house, and you mentioned the, the, the pastors, the elders, the deacons. In my experience as a sheep, the only person who visited me in my office are the literature evangelists. I think they should add into this list because they're the ones who reach out and we, they pray with us in our, in our offices. Then I wanted to ask a question which can be answered next time. Um, how you brought the, the book of First Peter, chapter 5, and I see a shepherd, and I'm seeing a shepherd, uh, the ones that I know about, and they have rods and they have staff in their hand. So the question is, do you use the rod and the staff in you are taking care of the sheep? How do you deal with an errant sheep for next time? Then last one, um, as shepherds, who prays for the shepherds? Who prays for the pastors? You come and pray with me when I'm happy and when I'm sad. Do you get famished? Do you get a burnout? Mm. And if so, who prays? A friend of mine married to a pastor asked me, Jacinta, they always call my husband to go and pray. But here we are. Who prays for us? Mm. Thank you. Wow. Um, pastor, close your marks and weigh in on Th that. Thank you so much. Very shortly, um, though. I, I want to pick on the third one, which touches me. Okay. It is very true, Mama. Thank you. Thank you for reminding members that uh, we pray for them. And no one prays for us. We pray for your children to go to school. Who bothers to know if pastor's kids have gone to school? <laughs> Do you know sometimes we come to even dedicate your houses, but you don't know even where, where we live. We come and dedicate your cars only to jump in a matter to home. <laughs> ah, I'm expanding the statement of a member. The pastor of a pastor are elders. Yeah. Now, my elders, if you look at the elders' handbook, it says mm. your first role is to pastor the pastor. That's right. If there is any ordained elder in this church mm. who doesn't know where the pastor stays, to go down in my tent, mm -hmm. <laughs> you are actually failing sure. on your primary responsibility. Mm. Because the moment the pastor will get a burnout, then he's in trouble. Sure. I mean, let me give an example of myself. Today, at Karengata, it was a family Sabbath. Yeah. Family Sabbath, it means you finish everything at the sermon, and you go home. home with your family. As I'm speaking with you right now, my wife is at church. I don't know what she's doing with the kids. And if I go there, everyone has gone home. 
be close to our wives. Mm -hmm. Come and visit with them. Sometimes they are too lonely. They are also human beings. Elders, visit pastors. Call them over lunch hour. Pastor, come. Not because you have a problem. Yeah, yeah. Bless your pastors. Mm -hmm. Get to know how they are going home. It's important. Sawa, sawa. Asante. Professor, when you take your clothes to the laundry, you call the pastor Kali Mbili Pia. You don't expect a smart pastor at church. And you don't care where he even does his laundry. Yes, I can see. <laughs> <laughs> I want, if, I want. if you do some little shopping, do for your pastor. Wonderful. Oh, amen. 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 <laughs> let, me, let me say this as my last word okay, please. Uh, for the purpose of finishing this. I don't want even to read this statement. I will, um, I will leave this copy with uh, the elder in charge of the prayer cell. Kindly take note of uh, some of the things we didn't cover. Thank you so much. Allow me to say this. This is a big church. And you have an opportunity of setting precedents for people to come and do what we call benchmarking. Sure. And you have great minds here. You have people here who are running projects in this church. You do not need to be a prayer cell leader. Our church allows that you can come and volunteer your knowledge and skills in this department. Mm -hmm. How have you succeeded at your place of work? You had a big task. How did you divide it into smaller units and you had very remarkable success? Bring it over. My last remark is this. Because this is a big church and you are thinking about big things. Mm -hmm. The success is in, in thinking small groups. Yeah. I repeat again. Thinking big is to think small groups. Mm -hmm. The success and the multiplication and doubling of membership cannot happen in this church. Yeah. It can only happen at the prayer cell. Amen. If you see the prayer cell adding membership, mm -hmm. then this church is adding membership. God Members, bless you. Uh, viewers, I want to invite you, not just to New Life Adventist Church through the online, but wherever you are, you need to belong. Form groups, discussion groups, prayer groups, invite your pastors, invite your elders, invite your deacons. Let us all work together. And as the pastors have said, let's get to know our pastor. Let's also be able to, to also give our time to know how our pastors are doing. For all of us doing that, we will be able to fellowship together as we wait for our second return. Don't forget that we are a church. We are supposed to be united as one, walking together. We used to say, I I'm passing through new life. To go where? To go to heaven. May God bless you. I want now to end the, 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 the discussion by a pastor. You can pray for us so that then we can be able to finish the discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. Viewers, let us pray. Eternal Father in heaven, you who loves your church, you who bought it by your own blood, mm -hmm. you who does not want to see anyone perish, you have accorded this church great respect and honor that through us will be able to bring many and those that are already in, that none will be lost. And we have all agreed in one accord this afternoon that the safest place where this will happen is at the prayer cell. We pray that may every member of this church Find a prayer cell where they can be able to belong. And thank you because of the leadership. We pray that this church will be a hub where people will come and benchmark to see how things are done. Thank you for we have discovered that thinking big is to think small groups. Mm -hmm. Lead this church on that journey mm -hmm. to the glory of your name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you.